On a beautiful spring afternoon from Midland Community Stadium, it's time for Midland versus Bay City Western Lacrosse. We're delighted to be with you on the MCTV Sports Network. My name is Chris Fosters, and I'm joined by Joe Stottlemyre on the broadcast today. And Joe, you founded the Midland Lacrosse Club back in 2005. You were the CEO and the head coach up until just this last season. So now that you're taking a sabbatical year of sorts, really happy to have you on the broadcast with us. And what are you looking forward to in Midland's second game of the season? Season and Bay City Westerns first of the 2018 campaign. I, I think it should be a very competitive game. I think Midland has some injured players. Um, they're missing four of their starting players, so I think it might be a competitive game. Bay City has one of their better teams that they've had this year. I talked to Derek before the game, and he's 21 of their players uh, on the team. Most of me says can catch and throw really well. They've been working on it, and uh, every year, every program in the Saginaw Valley gets a little bit better. Midland is the only co-op sport. Midland lacrosse is the only co-op sport in the Midland Public School District. So that's why you see white and orange on the field. This is a team composed of both Midland High School and Dow High School athletes. Bay City Western, of course, uh, representing Bay City Western High School. And looking at Midland, Joe, a landmark achievement this year for Midland lacrosse in that they are now school functioned a uh, school sanctioned and school funded now so yeah. you are no longer a self-funded entity and that's yeah. a, a, an incredible accomplishment yeah, that was uh, quite an honor i think we're uh we uh we worked that very hard to do that it took a lot of people to make that accomplishment a uh, reality for us but uh uh, I think we're going to have the national anthem here. And we'll certainly talk more about the landmark achievement for Midland and Bay City Western's lacrosse programs during the broadcast, and now the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we had at the twilight's last gleam? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. season showdown in the Saginaw Valley League between Midland and Bay City Western and Joe looking at some of the basics of lacrosse maybe this is your first time watching a game we have four 12-minute quarters 10 on 10 each team has three attackers four defenders of which one is the goalie and then three midfielders and then of course the object is to get the ball handled with your cross or your stick into the goal each goal is one point. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Seems pretty that's, simple, right? Yeah, that's very simple. <laughs> I think as people are watching this game at home, if they're unfamiliar with the game, the, probably the best way to explain it to someone who's new to it, it really is 10 on 10, but it's only 10 on 10 uh, a few occasions during a period. So one of the first things we'll see, it's going to be 6 on 6 when we do a face-off because only the six players in the middle of the field will be able to move. As soon as the team gets possession and they go into their offensive end, it'll be six on six there as well. Um, and then when we go to the and the, you'll notice there will be defensemen that will be standing at the midfield line because they can't come over. You always have to have four back on defense and three on offense. And so I like to say that lacrosse is it's a unique sport because probably the only time you have all ten people involved in the game is when the ball is being cleared by the goalie or defenseman at either end because then all 10 people are trying to get open and get the ball into the other end or they're trying to stop the other team from getting into the other end. So um, it's not quite as exciting as hockey, I'll be honest with you, because I think hockey is you know a smaller field and a lot of action. Sure. But it does involve a lot more people. Uh, typically a team has anywhere from 21 to 30 players. Uh, in a game you, you probably get about 25 to, uh, players that actually play in the game. 
Um, this is a tradition that I talk about a lot because I teach lacrosse in the schools. Um, they actually shake hands before the game. Um, I know some sports do it now. Uh, I know my son plays hockey, and they shake hands before the game because sometimes they don't shake hands after because it's such an intense sport at times. Um, and then they, they go back to where they're, uh, you know, the starting position here. Well, we're ready for face-off. Rayford Ralph takes it for Bay City Western in the dark colored jerseys against Joe That's Cullinane for Midland. Midland is 0-1 to start the season. They lost 8-4 to Canton. This is Bay City Western's first game of 2018. And what you'll notice on the face-off, uh, each team has one long pole up there. Uh, and that basically is designed because you can have four long poles on the field at a time. And so if white or whichever color receives the ball, that long pole will come off the field. So if Brown were to win the face-off, then number 24 would come off and 31 would stay on and play uh, defense. And the long poles are six feet long, right? Yep, they're six feet long. Um, and short poles are about uh, 42 inches. Squirts free, and it's Bay City Western who moves inside the 30-yard line of the football yep. field, and that's the attacking zone. Yep, that's called the box. Yep, so once the ball's in the box, everyone can move on the field. Scooped up by Midland and cleared out of harm's way by Ryan Crush. And this is a Midland defense that is a little bit inexperienced. Midland yep. lost a lot of senior veteran leadership. And an early goal for Midland yep. quickly on the offensive end. That's Garrett Brillhart, the yep. son of head coach Kurt Brillhart. Yep. Uh, Garrett is one of those hockey players that we have on the team. Uh, also, actually, those three attackmen are all hockey players. Midland goal, number four. And so Garrett basically Brillhart. what you see is the uh, offense three, tries to come down Michael the field Andrea. and draw the defenseman to, to cover him, and that leaves a, a man open. Michael Andreat, the junior from Dow High, is credited with the assist. And how much of an advantage is Midland at in particular because they've already played a game this season? I, I wouldn't say too much of advantage. I think, uh, I don't know, Bay City does not have turf, so I don't know if they've been practicing on their grass. Uh, so the, the, the ability for us to play and practice on this turf does give us a slight advantage. Well, we were noticing that during warm-ups, just how much the ball bounces when you're passing yeah. to each other. I would imagine you don't have that effect on grass as Bay City Western wins another face-off and sets up the offense. Cody Herber with the ball. Yeah, Graham Bailey is one of the better players in the Bay City Western program. I've watched him play over the summer in the last couple of years. And, uh, he's one of their solid players on that team. He'll be someone that Midland will have to keep an eye on today. Bailey with it now, number 11 for Bay City Western. And he finds Logan Kraus, the junior, down onto the wing. Air mailed behind Bailey, running towards the out of bounce line, but it stays in play. You were mentioning one of the interesting features of lacrosse is that when the ball rolls out of play, whichever player is closest to it, he might not be in possession of it, but whoever is closest to the out of bounce line wins possession for his yes. team. Yeah, Chris, and that's on a shot only, not on a pass. Okay. Yep. Well, there's a shot right, from right here. Bay City Western's Rocco Jaime. And Jacob Berry there, when the shot was taken, he uh, immediately started running towards the back line so he could be the closest to it. And they, and they get the ball back. So it's, a, it's an advantage in the game, and it kind of uh, allows us to have runs at times uh, during the game because you get the ball back either on a face-off or after a, sh a missed shot. Just about two minutes into the opening quarter, Midland versus Bay City Western. An early 1-0 lead for Midland, but it's Bay City Western that has controlled the time of possession for the early going, but now Midland works it into the attacking zone. It's Elliot Moore coming down, he'll try to draw a man. Great pass, a deflection, and it's scooped up by Bay City Western's goalie, Jordan Smith, a senior. Jordan actually switched from defense. He was a defenseman, and um, I saw him before the game and did not realize that he had switched to goalie. That's, uh, that's quite a, a challenge there. The goalie's a very difficult position to play in lacrosse. That ball moves pretty quick. I would imagine the net seems a lot bigger when you're down standing in between the pipes trying to yeah. stop the ball. Yeah, and some of these boys on the Midland team can shoot the ball 80, 90 miles an hour. Wow. So what we had there was a push on Midland. And when there's no possession of the ball, it's not just it's not a penalty, it's just a change of possession or uh, basically gets possession of the ball. You can't push anyone from behind. 
Are there any notable rule changes at the start of the 2018 season? Um, not really. I mean, they've changed the face off a little bit. They're trying to make it more competitive. Um, and you told me that once upon a time they were actually trying to take the face off out of the game. Yeah, they did several years ago. That was a nice shot. And a great block yeah. by Midlands goaltender Jake Pokrevka. Uh, you have teams that dominate the faceoff, so they get the ball after every goal, before every quarter. So they, they thought about taking it out, and they experimented with it in the fall several years ago and then decided it wasn't such a good idea. Coy George right up the middle of the wing area, angling his way to the attacking zone. You know, we talk about lacrosse as a Native American sport. Uh, Corey George is uh, one of the Native Americans on the team. Uh, his, his dad has been in our system, and Corey's been in the system, and has a younger brother on the JV team, Lars, and his dad uh, has been very helpful. There's a shot in front and another score for Garrett Brillhart, his second goal of the day and third of the season, and it's 2-0 Midland with 8-16 remaining in the first quarter. So again, you can see that the yeah the defenseman slid. What really should have happened is the far defenseman should have come in and covered uh, Garrett there. So basically, what you have in lacrosse is uh, when you have the ball on offensive end, you're always trying to either beat your man and have someone else slide onto you, and that will allow either someone open or you know an another pass to be made. I was talking earlier about uh, Jason George is uh, one of the coaches in the program and uh, has been involved for several years, so we're real happy to have um, that family involved in our game. When we spoke to Kurt Brillhard, Midland's head coach, before this game, he said one area for improvement for Midland after its first game of the season was winning more face-offs. They were only three for 16 in face-offs against Canton in Midland's first game of the season. That was the first face-off that Midland won in this game today. Yeah, it's uh, usually when you have a face-off, some people, they call it, it's called a FOGO, uh, F-O-G-O, which is face-off, get-off. And that person's job is just to face-off, and then he gets off the field um, if they win the face-off. There's an interception by Brillhart. He works it down low to Elliott Moore, and a block by Jordan Smith of Bay City Western. That was actually uh, Jared Zahn who took that shot. You said one of the standout players for yeah. Midland? Yeah, yep. He has an older brother that uh, played uh, lacrosse. Jared actually is um, he's on the uh, record list here at Midland. Um, I think he's number four in assists uh, at Midland all time. Well, that's one of the many advantages to having you with me, Joe. You started the Midland Lacrosse Club, yeah. so I'd imagine you're, yeah. the, you're the bookkeeper of all the records still going well, back to 2005. Well, I have a lot of help. <laughs> As uh, people who know me, that's, uh, that's quite a compliment you just made me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we have parents over the year that have uh, just been really, really helpful with us. And that ball, if it goes out of bounds, there's 15 yards behind the goal uh, for the, the players to play. And now they have, there's a 20-second clock that's running. And one of the officials keeps it on his hip, and it, the alarm will go off if... Goal is cleared. dangerously unguarded right now. Brillhart nearly had a hat trick for Midland. Midland jockeying for a position near the end line. Back to Brillhart. He's got Jared Zahn on the wing. Zahn with it now. Getting tapped out a little bit. Yes, yeah, so this is Tommy Middleton with the ball. He's another lacrosse player. He's actually going to play junior uh, hockey. Excuse me, he's a hockey player. Uh, he's a senior, and then Michael Andriot, the uh, another attackman, number 20, is another hockey. So we've got quite a few hockey players out there right now. I remember the first time I moved to Midland in 2003, and uh, I saw my first hockey game. I had never seen a high school hockey game before, and my first thought was, oh, I wish I had five or six of those guys um, with their quickness and toughness. And, well, there's uh, Chichester yep. for Midland with a dodge and then a high shot. He's a basketball yep. player, and you yep. can multi-purpose those athletes yep. too, right? Yes. Uh, Zach took a, uh, a couple, a year off or two, and now he's back. We're very happy to see him. Midland really settling in in the first quarter. Already a two-goal lead. Zahn with a pass behind back to Brillhart, and a good block by Smith of Western. He clears it.
with some open real estate. This is Dylan Jaime, one of three Jaimes, all brothers on the Bay City Western roster, coached by Derek Hugo, a former player of yours, yep. Joe. Yeah, Derek, uh, Coach Derek, I think in eighth grade. Uh, he was on uh, one of the Midland teams, and Derek ended up going playing lacrosse at Northwood and then uh, for two years and then became the Western coach, and he's been their only coach. Tommy Middleton with the takeaway for Midland. Bakrivka out of the crease. And, it, and Jacob's in that crease. He only has four seconds. He can't stay in that crease for very long. So after, you can see he moves around, and he's protected when he's in it. They can't touch him. Uh, so, But he comes out. The refs are counting that four second. Zahn. So he'll try to draw a man. Now, one of the changes that they made this year, right, is they have standardized the pocket yes. of the cross. Yeah, they made the pockets a little bit bigger. They were getting smaller and very difficult for, for defensemen to get the ball out. Um, in lacrosse, there's also a um, uh, the pocket can't be too deep. You have to be able to see. You can't see over the top of the ball as it sits in the cross. Uh, the other change they made to lacrosse is girls lacrosse is also played on this field. Okay, we're going to have a shot here. The coach is going to like this when he talks to him. That should have been an overhand shot there, folks. Uh, he's going to want that one back. Uh, typically, you see lacrosse players take a side-handed shot or an overhanded shot. I think when, he, when you're that close to the goal, uh, you, you want to do an overhand shot. The sidearms look pretty, and they aim for the top of the net, and, and all the players love them. But uh, when you want to score a goal, overhand is usually the best way to go. That's right. Yeah. So I was talking about the, uh, what we have now is a unified field. Uh, last year, when, when we were playing out here, you'd see two creases, and then uh, one crease for the girls, one crease for the boys. And so um, U.S. Lacrosse and uh, got together, and they decided that we wanted, you know, to save wear and tear on fields and painting and cost and everything involved. So the field now is is a little bit bigger. It's a 120-yard field. It used to be 115, and the box uh, line is on the 30-yard line. It used to the goal used to be on the 10 and the box was at the 30. So the box now is five yards bigger, um, actually about six yards bigger. So the advantage to that is at the end of the game, if we get to it or at the end of a half, if one team has a lead, sometimes they have a stall warning or they have to keep it inside that box. Uh, lacrosse is still, and I love this part of the game, it's the only uh, sport where the field actually changes size. And what I mean by that is if they have to keep it in the box, that's now they're out of bounds, the 30-yard line and, and going down the hat, the, uh, the numbers there, if you can see the lines on television. so. And that's done to make the sport more versatile, right? right. You can play it on different types of surfaces. Yep, and, and it also keeps the game active because the field is so big, if you get a one-goal lead, you could just play keep away. And, then, and they, college has a shot clock now that they've uh, instituted. Oh. I think eventually high school will. The difficulty is... High school, not all uh, fields have the ability to have a shot clock, but they do have a, a stall warning, so refs can have a stall warning. Well, that's one issue in high school basketball as well in the state of Michigan. There is no shot yeah. clock in that sport either. So Midland with it behind the net. Wraparound shot it. No, missed it, hit the side. But Brillhart is there for the cleanup. Tried to find Elliott Moore right in front. Bay City Western with the takeaway. What does Western need to do to find some rhythm on offense? I think they need to slow the ball down a little bit um, because they're, they, they had the advantage in the first couple minutes of the game. They had the ball most of the period, but every time Midland got it, they scored. So here, oh, that's a good chance. Oh, Michael Feinhauer, that one looked like it went yeah. off the post. Yeah, that was close. That would have been a nice shot. Chased down by Jacob Berry, the junior for Bay City Western, and it's out of bounds. And now that was a shot. Uh, Maybe not. Maybe not, okay. Midland with possession. Three minutes to go, first quarter. Midland two, Bay City Western nothing. And so basically now Midland has an advantage because the goalie comes out and it's really four on three that they're clearing the ball. And sometimes you'll see a defenseman, and we won't see it here, he'll come up and he can go over, but one of the middies has to stay back for him. So we say there has to be four people on defense. It doesn't matter if they have a defensive stick or a short stick. It's just four of the uh, clearing team has to be back. Well, as this first quarter has worn on, Midland has been 
in the attacking zone with more and more regularity. On the point right now, Crichton Annalyn coming off a two goal game and a loss to Canton. Midland actually trailed 5 0 at half, shook off some of the rust, but that five goal deficit too much to overcome. They're out to a 2 0 lead early in this one, and you can make it 3 0 after Jared Zahn gets on the board with his first goal of the season. Yeah, so you can see they're uh, moving the ball pretty well. Nice overhand shot. Middle and goal, oh. number 11. That was the right shot there, that right? That was the right shot. Especially well, when it goes in. As a coach, you know, you see players take, and I, I don't like it when they take sidearm shots and they go in because then you really can't say anything to them. So when they do sidearm and they miss, a uh, coach is happy most of the time. The Joe Cullinane back on the field for Midland for the faceoff against Rayford Ralph of Bay City Western. What technique goes into winning a faceoff? It's basically uh, your reaction time to the whistle and your strength. Because what Joe will try to do is either clamp the ball down, and, and so both of them, that was a pretty even clamp, and then scoop it out to a player. Um, this is Joe's only second year playing lacrosse. I remember when he came out last year, I was thoroughly impressed uh, with his skill and strength uh, as a faceoff midi. It's such an important part of the game because, you know, some of those teams over the years that we've played and haven't done well against, you can always go back to that face-off because they get the ball every time there's a goal or at the end of a period, and that's, those are quite, uh, quite a few times. Cullinane plays football on the varsity team at Midland High, and when we talk to Midland's lacrosse coach, Kurt Brillart, one of the unique things about lacrosse is that you can be a quarterback, a linebacker, a wide receiver, yeah. an offensive lineman, all in the same game. Yeah, I, I like that. That's one of the things that I talk about a lot when I teach the game is I, I'll find a big young boy who's playing the game of football, and I say, you know, you can be the quarterback in lacrosse because when you have the ball, you're in charge, you know. Now, Joe, we have our first penalty of the game. There yep. were actually two flags and a delayed whistle or a slow whistle. What did you see? Uh, there was a slash is, is the first call I saw, and then maybe a push. I'm watching the referee. Yep, no, he called the slash as well. So it's possible they both saw the same penalty and they, and they threw their flags. Now the uh, referees in lacrosse have some discretion to determine how long a penalty lasts, right? Yeah, if he were to swing a stick and hit him on the hand, that's a one minute penalty, but if he were to swing a stick and hit him on the shoulder or the head and it was a violent hit, he can go two to three minutes and it can be unreleasable. Now so, explain the difference between releasable and non-releasable to me. So right now, the, those two penalties will be releasable, meaning if Midland scores, those two players can go back in the game. But an unsportsmanlike penalty or um, a vicious hit can be an unreleasable penalty, and, you, and Midland can score multiple goals, right? Because if they get the face off, they go down and score. Um, so an unreleasable penalty is something you don't want to get at, at all costs, uh, but those do happen. And usually, typically, unreleasable penalties sometimes are an illegal stick. If it's cut too short or if it, uh, it's been altered somehow from the manufacturer, that's a three-minute unreleasable penalty. And some teams score three, four goals in that time frame, you know, in the right situations. So basically what Midland will try to do here now is move the ball around, draw one of those players out. They're actually two men up, so this should be pretty quick or simple because it's very, very difficult to stop uh, a team scoring when you're two men down because they can get so close to the goal. A two-man advantage and a three-goal advantage for Midland in the closing minute plus of the first quarter. Zahn with a pass back to Elliott Moore, and he buries it right at the yeah. feet of Jordan Smith. It's 4-0 Midland. That's just how Coach Brohart drew it up. Yeah, so you can see here they're just trying to move the ball back. And Elliott actually had a, a situation where he could have moved in a little sooner and then thrown it back to another player for another shot, but he felt he had the shot, and it was a good shot. Another overhand shot. Elliott Moore described as the ultimate utility guy. He can shoot, he can pass, he can defend. He's a guy that you want to work into a lineup in just about any given situation. Yeah. Again, Elliott's been playing the game uh, quite a bit. I brought him up as a freshman uh, for the playoffs when he was a freshman to play and, and he's been playing at the varsity level ever since. Really he can play attack or midfield. Um, very good stick handling and, and a good IQ for lacrosse because he kind of knows what's going to happen before it happens. Midland controlling this first quarter and the
concept of face-offs, this also exists in hockey too, allows teams that are succeeding on offense to really go on some runs because you can yeah. get the ball back right after scoring, yeah. as is the case for Midland right here. Right, and with 44 seconds left in the period, they'll either you know, hold on to it until the end of the period. So if, to make sure that Bay City doesn't have an offensive opportunity, they were to shoot it now and Bay City caught it, then they, you know, they might have a chance to get some uh, a play. But they'll probably do something with uh, you know, 10, 12 seconds left. They'll work something out here. Michael Andriot circles behind the net. Curls back in front, oh, the blocked pipe. by Jordan Smith, and maybe the post yeah. helped too. Bay City Western just trying to keep Midland off the scoreboard in the closing 10 seconds of the first. The new rule in the high school is that if, as long as they shoot before the horn, if the ball goes in, it is a goal. And up until you know this year, the ball had to cross the plane to count as a goal um, at the end, at the end of, the of the period. One quarter in the books, and it's a good start for Midland in their home opener. They lead Bay City Western 4 to nothing. You're watching this Midland Lacrosse versus Bay City Western Lacrosse game on the MCTV network. You can find MCTV channels on Charter Spectrum from 188 to 191 and under Channel 99 on AT&T's UVerse. This game will be televised at the following channel, dates, and times. Charter 189 and UVerse 99 on March 30th at 8 in the morning and 8 at night. Future dates and times will be on MPS TV channel 190, so check the Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandps.org or the Sunday edition of the Midland Daily News for more playback times. Interesting first quarter. I think uh, Bay City should be happy with that, with a, a four-goal lead. They did have a pipe. Uh, Midland also had a pipe. Um, the thing I, that I keep on thinking back to is the fact that Midland is missing four of their starters. You've got Jeremy Brookins, who is their first face-off guy. Um, Theo Ramada is a, a, def a defenseman who was out injured. And also, um, you know, Ryan Sasicki, obviously, uh, we talked about him earlier, as one of the uh, best midfielders in the state. 50-goal uh, scorer last year, uh, tore his ACL, and so he'll be out for the season. And then Kyle McIntyre, who's that short-stick defenseman. Uh, Kyle... Uh, I, I, I recruited Kyle in one of the one of the proud moments of my career to uh, <laughs> convince him to come out and play. We call him the human clear. He's one of the fastest players on the team. And if we get the ball in defense and it's a, a whistle play, uh, we in the past years we could get the ball to him and he would just outrun everybody. It was fun to watch. Sort of a track star on lacrosse, getting back to a point that you made that lacrosse really takes disciplines and athletic strengths from a lot of other sports and almost throws them all on the same field. Yeah, it's really a great sport because it combines so many other sports. Um, we've had players in the past that have been great soccer players, great hockey players. Um, in, you know, our, this is really one of our first better basketball players that, that I can remember that we've had, um, you know, this year. The teams do switch sides for the second quarter. Midland up four to nothing. Ball is rolling around now into the Bay City Western attacking zone just for a moment. Now it's rolled back into the wing area and a pile up near midfield. So one of the things they keep track of in lacrosse is ground balls. That was a nice ground ball there. And a hard hit out of bounds on the Bay City Western yeah, bench. On, I think that'll be a penalty on Midland. That was Graham Bailey that took yeah. the shot. Bay City Western, remember, had two penalties simultaneously to close out the first quarter. This one likely the first one against Midland. Yes, yeah, so it, sometimes it's real difficult for the officials to see, you know, actually who caused the penalty. Um, but there's a lot of pushing and shoving going around. Louis Lacrosse, the rules are you cannot hit above the shoulders or below the waist. Um, and you can only make contact in the front of the player's body with both hands on the stick as well. That's a... Sometimes we have difficulty with hockey players because they're allowed to take their hand off that stick. Lacrosse, you've got to keep two hands on it when you make contact with another player. Bay City Western with the man advantage now. They work it in front, and that shot is airmailed by Bailey and out of play. Yeah, I think they'll probably look for Graham Bailey here to either try to draw a man, beat a man, and get that slide, or like they just did there, work it to him on the crease. Bailey with it now. Trotting behind Pakrivka in goal for Midland. Turned away by Ryan Crush of the Midland defense. Yeah. 
Bay City Western just 3-14 and 14 a season ago. Their seniors are hungry to erase the feeling of that a bad taste in their mouths from last season. Rocco Jaime, pass to the point. And there's a long range shot that skips in the turf, courtesy of Brendan Jaime, Rocco's older brother. And the rule is it's not whoever's closest to the out of bounds line, it's whoever's closest to the actual ball where it went out of bounds uh, when they reward that ball back to Bay City. Graham Bailey again, that's Dylan Jaime, the third Jaime, so we have all three Jaime's on the field right now for Bay City Western. Rolling towards the end line. And eventually out, now Midland trying to influence the call of whose possession it is. Looks like they're gonna give it to Midland. So Midland has 20 seconds now to get the ball over midfield, and then another 10 seconds to get it into the box. And so they've accomplished that pretty quickly. And that's a good check on the defenseman there. So that's considered a pass. So Bay City will get the ball, no matter who's closest to it on a pass. And that's really what defensemen are taught to do, is just have their, yikes. Well, I was wrong there. Maybe it was called a shot. It looked like a pass to me. Midland with an opportunity to add to its lead. That one bounces wide off the stick of Michael Andriot. So the defensemen that have those long sticks, their idea is to knock down passes. And a goal in yeah. front, that time courtesy of Elliott Moore. It is good, and it's yeah. 5 to nothing, Midland. You can see Elliott did not, uh, he was trying to dance around that goal because you're not allowed to go inside that crease even when you shoot. Uh, your momentum can't carry you in. Now, if you get pushed in, that's a different story. So again, you'll see uh, Elliott made a nice cut to the goal. He got a nice pick there, and he's trying not to touch in that crease. So Good footwork now yeah. if his stick had crossed the line into the crease? Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine, yep. okay. Yep. And when you're taking a shot, that's okay. A good awareness that time by Elliot Moore, the junior. He goes to Midland High. Number 11, Jared Don. number seven, Elliot Moore. Both teams back to full strength now, under 10 minutes to play until halftime. Uh, we got Christian Gordon on the faceoff. He's at the other end of the field here, at the top of our uh, screen here. Uh, He's a, he's a defenseman. He's a first-year player. I, this is his second game and, and probably seventh or eighth time on a lacrosse field. Uh, very impressed with his uh, play so far. A football player, right? Yep. Yeah, so good friends with Ryan Sasicki. And I uh, actually, yeah, he said that Ryan convinced him. See if he can get that ground ball. He's got some speed. And size. Oh, nice clear. There you go. Working with the long pole. Oh, yeah, he's got to learn to get that up. He will in time. And out of bounds, comes back yeah. to Bay City Western. So Ryan Sasicki got him to play, and I said, why didn't you come out you know, two or three years ago? <laughs> That's always my question to people that come out late. But I, it takes a lot of guts and courage to do that, so and I'm proud of him. Better late than never, yeah. right? He's a junior. He's got yeah. another year left after yep. this. Bay City Western just trying to mount some consistent <laughs> offensive pressure on Midland. Again, Kurt Brillhart, Midland's head coach, rates some concerns about Midland's defense after the first game of the season. What do you think of Midland's defense so far today? They're doing pretty well. Um, I think, you know, Bay City Western is a young team, uh, less experienced. Uh, I did see them play against Canton, and they had trouble picking the ball up. And, you know, like right there, that most games that would be a goal because uh, the player might have caught that ball. It got free. Here comes a flag. Yeah. It's like a little... That'd be an illegal cross-check. Yeah. Midland actually has five players from last year's team that have graduated our playing in college. So it's um, quite an accomplishment. Two of them were on defense. Um, you have Sam Luzar and David Kepner. Sam is playing at Alma, and David Kepner is playing um, at Trine University. Down in Indiana? Yep. That's not close to Zionsville, is it? Uh, no, it's about halfway. Yeah, because we actually played Zionsville a few years back, and that's where we played. We played on the campus. Yeah, sometimes they step out of bounds because these lines, they, they get a little uh, mixed together. Uh, you can see some of the lines are colored. That's We call that a hockey move right there. Sometimes you just want to scoot the ball away from people and then go out and get it, and that's Tommy Middleton with a nice ground ball. And now what we're doing is subbing. You know, this is... One of the things at the college level is uh, very prevalent in the game. 
Um, and that's why the, the shot clock is going to be coming. I think it, at some point it'll be as soon as you get possession of the ball, you've got 45 seconds to shoot it uh, or hit the goalie or score. And that'll speed up the game even more. Lacrosse is called the fastest game on two feet. It was a, a reporter in Baltimore years ago. I uh, watched it play. Native Americans were playing a, a game in Baltimore, and he labeled it fastest game on two feet, and it, it has stuck. So. Well, and the way speed can put pressure on a defense and really allow an athlete with speed to shine on a lacrosse field, certainly understand the reason why that analogy was made. Yeah. Bay City Western with it now, under eight minutes to play until halftime. And now it's Midland ball after it trickles out of bounds. You'll notice also lacrosse years ago, uh, there used to be a, you could blow a horn right now and you'd have 20 seconds to sub. So every time the ball went out of bounds, you, you delay the game by 20 seconds to substitute your, your specialty players. Well, they eliminated that a few years ago. And so now it's called, we call it a quick whistle. And so the, the game is very fast. So anytime the ball goes out of bounds, you pick it up, you're ready to go, they'll blow the whistle. Um, so lacrosse every year they come out with rules that are always trying to improve the speed of the game and the excitement level of the game. In front, this is Garrett Brillhart. Nice. And he's got a hat trick for Midland. They lead 6-0. Brillhart really does a great job finding goals down low. Yeah, he does. He's a great finisher. Um, he was left, left all alone. I would think by now that they'd put someone on him or just be aware that the ball eventually is going to come back to him. And you mentioned the growing list of Midland Lacrosse alumni who have gone on to play in college. And Kurt's oldest son, Brett, who's Garrett's brother, is playing yep. college lacrosse at York. At Clarkson, actually. Clarkson, Clarkson in New York. Thank you, yep. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Sasicki, uh, the junior on the team, will attend York. Uh, J.P. Pokrivka uh, is going to be going to Lynchburg uh, next year. And, um, yeah, we have uh, V. Lobo um, is, uh, is, is playing in college. And uh, it's just it's really exciting because it's not the goal. You know, obviously, you don't want, uh, you know, I'm not out here to say, that, you know, playing in college is, is a great, exp you know, the goal for everybody. But if it's something they, they want to do, yeah, that's a great thing that they, uh, they can get to. Ethan Ulrich has it now. Back to Andriot behind the Bay City Western net. Hauled in by Ulrich. In front to oh, Zahn. Wow. That and nice that trickles finish. in. Yeah. What did you like about that finish? <laughs> that it went in. That's the only thing I liked about it because Zahn was moving away from the goal. And so his athletic ability uh, basically is the reason that, that, that ball went in. He looked like he was pretty close to the crease too. Yeah. See, he's actually moving away. He actually should stop and, and stay up field, but he goes behind. So that's, that's just a great athletic shot. So. Yeah, so we have uh, Cam Donahue is on the wing here on this faceoff, number 33. Uh, his older brother was the Saginaw Valley Player of the Year several years ago uh, as a faceoff midi. You know, so we, Midland was in the situation where we had a midfielder and uh, his, his brother that we were able to uh, dominate on faceoffs. Popped up. Yeah. Midland had it for a Ooh. moment. And it's picked up off the carpet by Cody Herber of Bay City Western. So you see the player running off the field there off screen was their Fogo. So number 25 for Bay City Western. Oh, nice shot. Bouncing ball to the back end. We talked about that Fogo person. His, his designated job is to face off, and if they, if his team gets the ball, he comes off the field. Most colleges uh, at, at every level have a Fogo player. Rocco Jaime with a pass in front. Oh, there we go. And there's a goal for Bay City Western, their first of the day. Zach Simmer gets Bay City nice. Western on the board. Actually good. Good lacrosse. He drew a man, and then Midland didn't have a slide in the backside. So that's uh, that's textbook lacrosse. Coach Brillhart will have to have a little discussion with the defense on that one. First goal of the season for Bay City Western. Remember, it is Bay City Western Western's goal, first game of the year. And we'll see if Bay City Western can go on a little bit of a run now. 
Yeah. These two teams played last year. You said the final score was 21-2. to two. Yeah, I think it was something like that. It was In favor well, of Midland? Yeah, it wasn't close. One of the things you see here in the faceoff, the players, it doesn't matter where the guys in the wing line up. They don't have to line up on one side or the other. Typically, they line up opposite. Uh, like if the team is winning the faceoff all the time, they'll line up on the defensive end. Oop, that's a great ground ball. Ethan Richard fights through some traffic for Midland and breaks free into the attacking zone. Lob down close to the net. So Miss Midland will be uh, substituting a player now. Sometimes that's an opportunity for a team to double team the ball if they're subbing a player. Because Bay City has a slight advantage. They have six on five right now. They chose not to do that at this point. What you find in lacrosse is really the most effective offenses are when everybody's involved in the play. And there's a ball that goes out of bounds. Uh, typically, it's not one person going one-on-one -on -one against the goal. One of the terms that we use in coaching is you want to, as an offensive person, you want to occupy your defender. You want him thinking about you and that you're a threat. Well, there's, you know, he can run over, but he chose not to. Nearly a collision, some friendly fire there for Midland. Midland had it for a moment. Now Bay City Western comes away with it. This is Rocco Jaime, just a sophomore. Oh. A Joey, bobble. Joey Kilbride, a great, great strong defenseman. Picked up by Logan Kraus for Bay City Western, however. Warriors hang on to it. Uh, on defense here, uh, Mason Reed is number one. He's the only freshman on the team. Mason was just brought up uh, a couple days ago uh, to the varsity, I think, to help out with some of their injured players. I think I can sense some excitement in Bay City now that they've had that first goal. Feinhauer was probing for a moment. Midland streaks in. Picked up again by Feinhauer. Now with some breathing room. Shot over oh. the stick of Bay City Western's Dylan Jaime, and a flag comes in. And typically they let the play go on until the ball, um, until the other team gets possession or the ball hits the ground in high school. So if the flag goes down, it's called a play on. And if Bay City Western could keep the ball in the air, they could get a really a, typically a free shot on goal because no matter what, where it goes, out of bounds or who gets it, they get the ball back for the man-up situation. I think Joey's being called for a push. That's a, yeah, it's a 30-second foul. Now that would be a technical <laughs> foul as opposed to a personal foul. Right, exactly. So that's a releasable penalty. Um, so if basically scores and, you know, very quickly, then he can go back in the game. Bay City Western down 7-1 with 4.15 and counting in the second quarter. Mm, that's unfortunate. Now Midland with an opportunity to kill the rest of the man advantage for Bay City Western. So now Bay City Western has a uh, man up, so basically a player should be on every player on the field, even the goalie. And that usually doesn't happen on a clear. Usually the goalie is free. And Pokrivka is free right now. The yeah. third-team All-State player turns it over at midfield. Pokrivka hustling back. And the ball trickles past the goal line extended, and it does get out of play and goes to Midland. Well, I think the penalty has been released. Oh, we're back to all even, no advantage. Pokrivka with the heave into the wing area. Andriot has it for Midland. To Garrett Brillhart, already with three goals today. Now behind the extended goal line, Jared Zahn back out to the wing. Crichton Annalyn had a two-goal game for Midland against Canton. He's been quieter on the offensive end today. Midland still leads by six. Yeah, three minutes to go. They probably got a set play here. Here's the freshman, Mason Reed. In front, a shot, yep. a bouncer, and a goal yep. for Midland. Brillhart again. Is that number four for Garrett yeah. Brillhart today? A sensational day for the senior. 
Again, typically in lacrosse, you, you dodge one man. If you beat him and you're close enough, you take a shot. Or you dodge a man and you pass it off to a teammate if someone slides on you. So he did, uh, he did what he was supposed to do. No one, no one got to him in time. Do you teach players to shoot a bouncing shot like that in certain situations? Yeah, typically the bounce shot's difficult uh, to, for the goalie to track because he can follow it down to the ground and then often, depending on where you bounce it, it bounces right over his shoulder. Um, overhand bounce shots are typically good. Again, I said earlier that the players like that sidearm up to the top of the net because you can actually hear the net. Make, it makes a noise when they hit it, and they kind of like that. But the goalie stick is already up there, so it's not really the high percentage shot that you want to take. Next time we got to get mics on the net so we can hear that sound. Yeah, uh, in college they have the cameras, and they, you know, <laughs> the big ESPN games, they've got those big microphones, so you can hear that sometimes. Midland back to work. Here's Brillhart again. Oh. He makes the extra pass that time, and a player that's, in the crease. That's good on selfish lacrosse. That's great. Bay City Western dodges the bullet, however. You mentioned that Bay City Western's goalie, Jordan Smith, is very new to the position. He's been under yeah. siege today. How do you think he's holding up? He's doing pretty good. You know, he's a big boy, and he's got good posture. And, uh, you know, I, it, it, it's definitely a challenge to go from a, a defensive stick, which has that small head, to the big head that he has right now. It's a little bit harder to throw with that goalie stick. Obviously easier to stop the ball. You've got more surface area, but to catch and throw with it is quite a challenge. Logan Krause with some breathing room. Lost the handle. Batted around and scooped up off the carpet by Midland. It's Joey with a nice clear. Joey Kilbride. Midland is subbing again, so they'll slow it down. Jared will run behind. Typically in lacrosse, when you're subbing, you want to get the ball behind. In case for some reason he was able to lose it, you have more time to recover and stop him from getting a fast break in the other direction. Zahn dodging around with about a minute and a half to play until halftime. Jared is a left-handed uh, attackman, and so he'll kind of hang out on that side, and you know, Garrett Brillhart is right-handed. Typically, most players are right-handed. Uh, at the higher level, you get players that can catch and throw with both hands. And so your handedness is determined by the top hand yes. on the stick? Yep. That's a great look. And another oh, goal a... for Midland. They're pouring it on here late in the second quarter. Oh. Did they wave it off? Yeah, I think they did outside of the net. No goal, nearly yeah. a goal for Davis Pertell, the junior. Yeah, Davis had a great angle. Got it right away. Yeah, it looks like you can see it rolling on the back. Uh, Davis had a brother, J.P. Pertell, that played uh, Midland for several years and also played club lacrosse at the University of Michigan. Now he's in med school. Here comes Dawson Richard. He wiped out for Western. 45 seconds to go until half. Feinhauer, the team captain, finds Tyler Rieski. And a whistle. Yeah, I was wondering why they weren't calling a timeout. They can't. Timeouts don't. They don't, um, timeouts don't carry over, obviously. So he's got two timeouts, and uh, so he did end up calling one there. So, Why would you call a timeout in this situation, you think, if you're Western? You want to make sure that you have your best players on the field, your, your best six offensive players, and sometimes you have a set play that you want to work on. Uh, and 30 seconds is plenty of time. They can probably you even get a shot off if they get it back, even call another timeout and have another set play. So that's uh, typically why you'd want to call a timeout when you get the ball in your offensive end. You want to make sure you have it in your offensive end where it is. So if it's on the defensive end of the field, you still have to clear it. Uh, and that sometimes that's a challenge. Remember to catch local high school sports action on MCTV Sports. Visit www.cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV and www.midlandps.org for more information. In case you missed them, catch replays of wrestling, hockey, basketball, lacrosse, and many other events on MPS TV channel 190. Or check out the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel to watch all these games in beautiful high definition. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook to get up-to-date information about MCTV. Final 35 seconds of the first half between Midland and Bay City Western. Eight to one, a stout lead for Midland late in the second quarter. 
So this is the eighth time that Midland and Bay City Western have played. Um, Bay City has not yet uh, beaten Midland, but this is actually not a bad uh, performance so far. Eight to one is a pretty, pretty good performance, I think, for Bay City. So they'll try to run some set play here. Western's head coach Derek Hugo said the strongest aspect of his team this year is the senior leadership willing the younger players on the team to be better at every practice. It's Joey Kilbride with the almost a takeaway check. He got the ball out of his stick, but it was a push from behind on Midland. Since no one had possession of the ball, it's not a penalty. Bay City just gains uh, possession of the ball. Dylan Jaime will lob it back in. 17 seconds. Still with plenty of time. Too much bounce on the shot and into the back net. With 10 seconds now. They should be able to get another shot off. Here's Ryeski from behind the net. Keeps it himself. Spins, shoots, yes. and it gets past wow. Pokrivka. That's a goal. 2.5. Seconds left on the clock. There's some belief on the Bay City Western sideline right now. Yeah. yeah he's going to turn back to his right side. That's his strong hand. He just caught JP by surprise. Uh, actually, the sun might be an issue. You can tell by the shadow of JP and where he was standing. That's uh, one of the disadvantages of uh, the way this field is set up for lacrosse and the times that we play the games. Um, they played the games earlier today. You, typically, the varsity starts at 7, and I think, I'm think i hoping that one of the reasons they did because that sun shines right in the goalie's uh, face for you know one of the periods. So if you're Jacob Pokrivka, the Midland goalie, it's the perfect time for halftime. It is 8-2 Midland over Bay City Western, and we'll return from Midland Community Stadium for the third quarter after this. Beautiful late afternoon for early season lacrosse. It's Midland versus Bay City Western. Happy to have you with us on MCTV Sports. Alongside Joe Stottlemyre, my name is Chris Vosters. And all things considered for late March, mid-50s on the lacrosse field, this is a beautiful yeah. day to play the sport. This is perfect. It's one of the nice things about lacrosse is we start out in the freezing cold and we move into the nice spring warm weather. And then by the time the heat comes, the season's over. So... Uh, this is a great day for lacrosse. I think uh, Bay City should be real happy uh, with the performance that they have, only down by six, uh, having never beaten Midland. Uh, so I think uh, Derek's doing a great job with this team this year. So, What do you like about Midland up 8-2 to two at the half? I think they're moving the ball really well. They're not playing uh, selfish lacrosse. Uh, most of the goals have been assisted. You, know, you haven't seen one player go to the goal and try to score. And uh, A lot of them probably think that they can at any point, but one of the things you want to do in preparing for this when you're playing a team that may be not as good as you is prepare for the team that is, you know, a little bit good where you have to move the ball, you have to pass it around. It's a, it's a, it's a team game. Um, we've talked about in lacrosse, you know, earlier uh, we keep track of ground balls. The next thing that's most important in lacrosse is assists, and goals are actually the, the third thing you want to – yes, you want to win the game, uh, and you keep track of the score, but at the end of every game, uh, when I was a coach, we would give out the game ball, and it typically went to the guy who got the most ground balls in the game. Now you see Bay City Western there. They actually scored the final goal of the half, so maybe they took some momentum into the locker room at halftime, and yeah. hopefully in the eyes of Bay City Western, they start the third quarter with that momentum. But I think if you're Bay City Western, you have to find a way to keep Midland from getting the ball to Garrett Brillhart. He had four yeah. goals yeah. in the first half. I, and typically sometimes in, in a situation like this, you actually cut a player off. You tell one player, I'm just gonna, you're face guarding him, and you play five on five the rest of the way. That might not be a bad idea to start, uh, to experiment for Bay City, but I think that Midland would find other players that probably could shoot and score. 
Well, part of the reason, perhaps, why Bay City Western was able to get that last goal of the second quarter on the board, and this is to take nothing away from Tyler Ryeski, the player who scored the goal, but Jake Pakrivka, Midland's goalie, was looking right into the sun, and now Bay City Western's goalie, Jordan Smith, will get a dose of that. And you were mentioning how tough the position is to play anyway, and then yeah. you factor in an element of nature, and yeah. how tough can it be, man? Well, the ball is white and the sun is kind of yellow in <laughs> yes. your face, and it's, uh, it's possible to lose it there for a brief moment. You know, you mentioned the name Jaime, uh, the players that they have on the team. Brent Jaime, uh, I believe he's the father of these, these boys, actually started the youth lacrosse program in uh, Bay City this season. So I'm very happy as someone who started lacrosse here in Midland that's one of the things I think that we need is more youth programs. Saginaw has their program. It's been going on for several years. Now Bay City has their youth program. Um, one of the things I look forward, it may sound ironic, I actually look forward to the day where maybe Bay City or Saginaw beats Midland. Uh, that means it's a competitive game. And, uh, you know, I think they're getting closer every year to, to being more competitive. And that's a great takeaway right there from, um, you know, one of their players on uh, – Reed Zielinski yeah, came up with you. it a moment for Bay yeah. City Western, and now the ball in the cross of one of Bay City Western's best players, Graham Bailey, head coach Derek Hugo, says this guy's a three-year starter and a stud. Yeah. Great look right into the middle of the field there. Player just maybe lost it briefly. And that was one of the Jaime's that you talk about. Okay. Three of them on the team. And number 99, Rocco, who's guarding the inbounds pass right now for Midland, is... Considered the most promising. He's the youngest. He's a sophomore and a pretty good hockey player. Yeah. That's kind of how it works in lacrosse. Over the years, you have families with three, four players or one or two, and the younger one usually has the advantage because he's been around watching the game. Uh, Jared's on there. Uh, you know, he was chasing the ball there. Had an older brother to play. You know, and he was in uh, you know, middle school and elementary school when he was playing. Bad pass. It's loose. Jaime tried to escort it over towards the sideline and Christian Gordon comes up with it for Midland. Great. Long stick looking for Andrian and it bounces to Bay City Western scooped up by Dawson Richard. We're going back and forth here. We have a flag down. So the ball hits the ground they'll blow the whistle. So the penalty is going to be on Midland because Bay City had the ball the flag went down and they let them play until they either shoot or lose possession of the ball. So that was a slash on Midland. It'll be a one-minute penalty. Penalties can be one minute, one minute, two minutes, or three minutes in length. Right, 30 seconds, yeah. 30 seconds, one minute, two, and three. Uh, rarely do you see a two- and three-minute penalty, but more and more over the last couple of years, we've, we've seen two-minute penalties to keep the unnecessary aggression out of the game. And you could foul out too, right? Yes, five uh, five penalties and you're out. No one near that threshold for either team. Excuse me, it's five minutes. It used to be five penalties and they changed it. Now if you get a three-minute unreleasable penalty with your stick, you, you've got to be careful as a player. Ryeski, a goal scorer for Bay City Western with it on the goal line extended. Pass batted to Dylan Jaime and he loses it out of bounds. Midland yeah. ball. Yeah. So again, that uh, Bay City's man up, they should put a player on every player on Midland side. Even the goalie. Yep. Put Krivka with it. So Brillhart came over the field. Now, now he's able to come over because one of the middies crossed the midfield line, allowing him to cross over midfields, because typically you have to have three attackmen on the offensive end at all times. So Garrett is an attackman. He can come over the midfield. Uh, one of the midfield, I think it was Cam Donahue went over. Ethan Richard, face guarded by Bay City Western's Cody Herber. Yeah, I was watching their practice the other night, and I was pretty impressed with Ethan. He's a fast player. He's a good athlete. I'm always impressed with boys that have high speed. Jared Zahn lost that one behind the goal. I don't think you can blame that one on the sun, because I'm not sure what happened there. Did they rule that a shot? Because it looks like well, Midland. Well, if, if it ricocheted off one of the Bay City players, then it would be Midland ball. So maybe one of the Bay City players defect, deflected the pass. Um, but it didn't look like a shot. Zahn fighting away Rayford Ralph, the defender for Bay City Western. Here's Brillhart, pass onto the wing. 
On a oh, cut, Ethan cut. Moore's shot is blocked away by Jordan Smith, a fine save by Bay City Western. Yeah, that's a great play, both on offense and defense. Western with some breathing room now and a wonderful poke check of sorts by Midland's Brooke. Ben Bruick. Yeah. There's Cam Donahue right at the feet of Zahn. He loses it, and it's scooped up by Ralph. Yeah, ben is the, uh, one of the few sophomores on the team. We actually brought him up at the end of the year last year. Uh, great athlete, got a great future ahead of him. Oh, be a shot right here. Oh. Ralph nearly oh. took it coast to coast, and then a whistle. Oh. I'd call that a push with possession, I'm imagining. Oh, oh a legal body check from when, behind. When you have the long stick, as Ralph did right there for yeah. Bay City Western, is it harder to carry it the length of it, the field virtually like that? It is. Typically, the uh, defenseman should choke up uh, to make it a shorter stick, and that makes it easier to move around and less likely for someone to, uh, to take it away from them. It looked like he was trying. Sometimes you can tell. You can watch a defenseman come up the field and he's like, oh, he's, gonna shoot. He's, he's got shooting a goal or getting a goal on his mind. I think that's what his intention was. Short sticks and long six-foot poles on the field. You can have, at most, four long poles on the field per team. That's a great save. Great shot. By Pokrivka. He's an all-state honoree and certainly poised to have a Similar season, and this is senior year with Midland. Midland made it all the way to the regional final last year, just one game shy of the state quarterfinal. Yeah, that was a, a tough one. A one-goal defeat. Mm -hmm. We had the ball. We were a man up. Um, and actually had the ball right in front of the goalie on a pass, and we, we dropped it, weren't able to finish. So we came close. So we lost to him 16-7 during the season and then turned it into a one-goal game at the end of the year. So. And I know this isn't any consolation for you, Joe, but Heartland, the team that beat you, made it all yeah. the way to the state semifinals. Yeah, and, uh, well, they crushed the next team that they played, and then it was one-goal game. So you, that's one of the other things that's nice about uh, Michigan lacrosse is the goals games are getting closer. You know, Brother Rice used to beat up in the state final game on teams. They would beat them 16-2 to two or 4, or, and now... Uh, both, uh, all four of the final four games were one goal games. So I think Brother Rice will lose this year. I just have a kind of a gut feeling at some point they're going to, um, some of the other teams are going to step up their play and, and get some solid players. Every Division I championship in Michigan High School lacrosse has been won by Bloomfield Hills' Brother yeah. Rice going all the way back to 2005. Hard to believe. Yeah. That's quite a streak. They're, uh, they're great. They've had great coaching. They've had only two coaches in that stint. Uh, they have great athletes, great players. Yeah. Looking for our first goal of the third quarter now. Coy George had it in front, but got tied up by Jacob Berry of Bay City Western. It's lobbed out of play, and it goes to Bay City Western. So we're almost halfway through the third quarter, and this has been a pretty even yeah. period so far. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm very impressed with the way Bay City's playing. This is Bay City Western's first game of the season. Streaking in, and a shot from Dawson Richard, another good save made by Pokrivka, who's starting to work a little bit more in the second half. Here comes Tommy. Middleton with a pass right at the waist of Andriot. Andriot hustles it down. Sort of boxing out Graham Bailey of Bay City Western. So what you saw there is... Uh, Graham Bailey was putting a little pressure on him, but he wasn't really pushing him. You can put equal pressure on the backside of a player, but you can't shove him. And so actually Graham played that perfectly as the ball rolled out of bounds and was last touched by Midland. So. Here comes Western into the attacking zone. Possessed by Logan Kraus. He's chased out into the wing area and a takeaway by Christian Gordon. A new player, you were telling me, Joe, you got to love that. <laughs> yeah, so we have to, I'm surprised they're not shooting from the top. You know, if you look at the shadows on the field, uh, you 
got a shadow pointing right at the goalie. And that's where you, the ball should be coming from. Overhand, high shot. Just on the opposite side of where a stick is. I don't think we'll even see the ball. Garrett Brillhart spinning around. Back out to Bruick. Down to Annalyn. Annalyn on the dodge. Back to Bruick at the point. Down low in front. There's a shot. Long haired senior. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was Carson Gray. My mistake. Here comes Bay City Western. Michael Feinhauer looking for some opportunities in front. Might have had Rocco Jaime for a moment, still looking his direction. Feinhauer dangerously close to the crease. Just a little bit too tall for Rocco Jaime, and white jerseys converge. And it's picked up by Midland's Ethan Richard. Richard with some wheels. Into the attacking zone. The lob down to the goal line extended. See, the rest will raise their hand when the opposing team gets into the offensive end to let all the officials on the field know that they've gotten into the box. Because the far official has the clock. He's going to a shot in front and a score for Ben Bruick, the sophomore in Midland, breaks the mini scoring drought in the third quarter. Excellent pass, too, by Michael Andre out of Midland. Midland goal, number 21, Ben Bruick. That's it, the number 20, Michael Andrea. It was a top shelf goal. That was nice. Well, Midland reasserts itself, back up seven with 3.42 to go in the third quarter. I'm joined by Joe Stottlemyre, who was the head coach of Midland Lacrosse until taking this year off. And what's been the most difficult part about at least sharing the reins this year? Oh, I'm not sharing them. They're all Kurtz and Jerry Pokrifka and Bob Costley and Jamie Zahn. Um, and they're doing a great job. Uh, I've been to a couple practices, I'm just basically just, just watching. It's, it, it's a challenge, but I, I think Kurt's doing a great job. You know, Kurt did not play in college, and I, and I don't think that's really an issue. He knows the game well enough, and all these guys really do. Jerry Pokrifka played college baseball. Um, Bob Costley is a softball expert. I've seen him pitch a softball, and I think he throws it as hard as I can a lacrosse ball. Very <laughs> 80, impressive. 90 miles per yeah, hour. It looks like it. So, And they're all parents, right? They're all the coaches. Um, in the Midland program are parents of players and they start at the youth level and they move up with their sons. And so we're, uh, we're just very fortunate at the support we get from top to bottom at the Midland Lacrosse program. Zach Chichester with the turnover picked up by Bay City Western. This is Ben Shepard and a hard check. He takes a seat courtesy of Coy George. Midland up with it. Tommy Middleton streaking down the middle of the field. Pass in front. Brillhart going for more and it's wide left. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I didn't actually see the hit. It may have got, looks like he may have got him in the throat with a with some something. A clean hit, right? No yeah. flags. Oh, yeah, it was clean. It is possible. Checking is allowed as long as the hit is administered between above the waist and below the neck. Yep, and the player has to be, can't be in an unsafe position, meaning having his head turned in a different direction and doesn't see the hit coming. He has to have time and opportunity to protect himself or, or get himself out of being checked. You also okay. have to keep both hands on the cross as well. You see the injured player for Bay City Western, and here is the hit. Yeah, that, uh, that should have been a penalty. Arms maybe a little extended. Because yeah. he hit him in the throat, and that's kind of borderline. Sure. He did do the right thing. He hit him with a glove, and you're, supposed to, you're allowed to hit them with the glove hand. Um, and they tell the officials, when in doubt, throw the flag, right? Yeah. So, you know, and as, I, as I look at that replay, I'm thinking maybe he may have got him below the throat, which is legal. You know, so that's a, that's a tough one to call. I think the referees did the right job by not making the call. It's unfortunate he's hurt. Uh, I'm sure maybe he just got the wind knocked out of him. 
2.39 to play in the third quarter. You're watching this game on MCTV Sports, and the coverage of this game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, call MCTV at 837-3474 or visit www.cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV to get started. Also, keep up to date on what's happening at MCTV by following us on Facebook. You know, Chris, we talked earlier about some of the players from Midland that are uh, played in college and going to college. Some of the seniors, uh, Adam Nunn is a defenseman. He'll be going to Michigan Tech, um, not as a lacrosse player, but as a student. Joey Kilbride will go to Grand Valley State and study physical therapy. Um, of course, JP we talked about. Um, Jared Zahn's going to go to Ohio State. Uh, Tommy Middleton, I mentioned earlier, is going to play juniors hockey. And then uh, Corey, Joy, Corey George is going to go to Genesee College in New York. He wants to play box lacrosse. Um, box lacrosse is an interesting game. It's played on a hockey rink. And uh, Canada kind of invented the sport. Uh, Native Americans are, play it as well. Lacrosse is our oldest sport in North America. Uh, so it is the Native American game. They, they, they've given us this game, and um, we feel honored to, to play it and represent it well. And so we never like to see anyone hurt in, in any circumstance. And you see both teams are cheering on the player as he got up. Ben Shepard walking off under his own power. But uh, one of the nice things about box lacrosse is that the field is obviously smaller, and so the, the stick skills of players are just extremely um, effective uh, when you get into the open fields like this. So more and more players that play at that next level uh, have played box lacrosse. Um, so we see Mason Reed's on the field at uh, freshman uh, with Corey and Tommy Middleton. So most likely they have a set play. They've come out of a timeout. And they'll, you know, uh, coach sometimes will ask a player, you know, who's got an advantage on a player they think they can dodge. A re-dodge by Gary yeah. Brillhart. He's now double teamed behind the net, and understandably so. He's got four goals today. Back to Mason Reed at the point, and now here's Coy George. Putting pressure on Graham Bailey of Bay City Western. Oh, Gets nice the shot, shot off, and that looked like it went in. Yes, yeah. it's a goal for Midland, 10-2. to two. Right through the five hole. That was, a, that was an excellent shot. I think as we see in the replay, he got his hands free. One of the things we talk about is we want to get our hands free and get some time and space. And, and Corey did everything there on his own. He's free. Got no pressure on him. Takes a nice overhand shot. Beautiful. So Midland's two goals in this third quarter. One has been top shelf. One was a bouncer down low at the feet of Jordan Smith. Yeah, I think that's Corey's first goal of the year. I think yeah. so, too. Yeah. Well, Corey recently just moved. Um, their family moved to Midland, and uh, so we're happy to have him here. He's a senior. And his first goal of the season comes with yeah. 2.14 to play in the third quarter. Back to the face-off circle. Joe Cullinane takes it for Midland against Rayford Ralph. You have Brendan Latard out there on defense as well. So he'll come off now that... Uh, Midland's gotten the ball. Ethan Richard hangs on to it. Back to Garrett Brillhart behind the extended goal line. And he's shadowed by Dawson Richard. Brillhart makes his move. He's got Zahn on the wing. Here's Zahn now with a shot mm. wide left and well out of play. Yeah, I think that ricocheted off the defenseman. It was Graham Bailey, I think, covering him. Midland back to work, looking for their first win of the season. Game number two for Midland. Brillhart with a oh, bouncer, and that's nice goal moves. number five for the senior. I think they thought he was going to pass the ball off. He made a nice look. He looked him off and made a nice overhand shot. He's having a great day. What's it like as a player when it seems like everything's going in? Does it, so the net just look bigger on a day like this? Yeah, I think he's, uh, you know, he's... Placing his shots well. Yeah, they moved it really. When you get your hands free, when you, uh, one of the things we teach on defense is as much as possible you want to have a stick on the player's hand because that affects the accuracy of the shot. And on offense we teach them, get your hands free, get some time and space so you can get an accurate shot. So I think you saw right there, uh, Garrett was able to get his hands free. Midland has scored three goals in under five minutes late in the third quarter. Under 90 seconds to go. The lead is swelled to nine for Midland. Here's Ethan Richard again. 
around the extended cross of Rayford Ralph, and now to Jared Zahn. That was a nice play by Graham Bailey because he actually slid uh, to stop the player from going to the goal and, and threw it to his man where he, in turn now he's covering him. So. Rolled on the ground to Zach Chichester. So what they're doing is they're putting a short stick on uh, Jared Zahn. And they got a long stick yeah. on Garrett Brillhart. Right. Typically the attackmen have a long stick on them. It's, it's rare that you put a short stick on an attackman. That means you, you're taking one. Oh, that's probably exactly why. Beautiful interception wow. by Bay City Western's Rayford Ralph. Great play. He's a solid player. That was a great play. Here's the sophomore Rocco Jaime. Final 33 seconds now of the third quarter. Bay City Western looking for a goal to take some momentum into the final quarter. Again, I think they'll hold on to this so they get the last shot. They don't want Midland to get the ball back. They've had a pretty successful quarter here. Here comes Ryeski. He scored a goal at the end of the second quarter, trying to reprise that here. There's the shot, and Pakrivka is over it. Rebound nearly controlled by Bay City Western, but Midland comes up with it. Eight nice. seconds left. Mason Reed with a nice ground ball. Mason's got some wheels for a freshman. He's very fast, got good stick skills. And able to virtually kill all of the remaining time left in the third quarter. 11 to two, Midland still up big going into the fourth quarter. And after a bit of a slow start, you might say, Midland really settled in and, and took over the second end of the third yeah. quarter. Sometimes that halftime can work as an advantage or a disadvantage, you know, depending on the weather and you know if you're having some success. Sometimes you don't want to have a halftime. You just want to move into the next quarter. Uh, but I think that rest did uh, slow them down a little bit, but they were able to come back. One final 12-minute quarter remaining. Do you have a story to tell? Is there a message you want to share with the community? The Midland Community Television Network is Midland's only TV station, and it is here for you. Individuals and nonprofits have been using MCTV for 35 years to share ideas, promote services, raise funds, and build a greater sense of community in the Midland area. If you are interested in learning a new skill, promoting your club, hobby, or nonprofit, or are looking to volunteer, please give MCTV a call at 837 3474 to find out how you can join us. Alongside Joe Stottlemyre, my name is Chris Vosters, ready for the fourth quarter. And if you're Midland, you are telling your players what? Uh, keep on passing the ball. I mean, that's really what it, uh, most of their goals have come from moving and moving the ball and passing the ball. Coy, had, uh, George had a goal that was unassisted. I, it's the only one I think I can remember. Um, so the, the game is a passing game, and the advantage is uh, to those who can catch and throw and move the ball quickly. The ball moves quicker than any human being can run, uh, so it's always advantageous to you know, pass that ball. So Midland now will have that sun, and it's gotten lower in the sky. So if I'm Bay City, I'm, uh, you know, anytime I have the ball and, I, and I've got some, any type of shot up top, I'm going to take it uh, at the top there. And I think they've switched goalies now. Number 18's come in. It's a good point. Nicholas Morris, the junior, checks into the game for Jordan Smith, the senior who started in goal for Bay City Western. And again, the teams switch sides to begin the new quarter. So Midland's defense, and in particular goaltender Jake Pakrivka, is now staring into the sun. And you cannot wear sunglasses in lacrosse. Um, why do you think that is? You know, I don't know. I, I, years ago, when I coached in Indiana, we had a player that came to us and had a visor on his helmet, and the referees made him take it off uh, because I don't know the reasoning. Maybe they want to make sure that he can see the ball at all times. Um, We've compared lacrosse to other sports at times during the broadcast, and you can wear sunglasses in baseball, you can yeah. wear visors in football. That's interesting that you can't yeah. do that in lacrosse. You can have uh, glasses that are prescribed to you that have shading uh, material. And I don't think anyone's going to question it at this level. Um, but as soon as I saw that sun, I'm looking over at JP thinking he might want some sunglasses. Midland with it down low. There's a shot by Annalyn and a goal for Midland. So they, they made me look good here because they're moving the ball well and, and there's a wide open shot. So that was uh, right on cue. Crichton Annalyn gets in on the action, his first goal of the day, third of the season. And an interesting story about Annalyn is, as you well know, Joe, he was a long stick mini last year. You can help me get to that after you see this replay. Yeah, so uh, that was a nice shot. 
right in the five hole again. So what he did there is he changed direction of the shot. So his stick was up high and brought it down and, and, and had a nice shot. But, yeah, what you find is uh, one player that comes to mind is uh, there's a senior at Alma College um, and um, Sam Luzar uh, at one point was a midi. Uh, Austin Ear was a, was a defenseman for me. And both of them play a different position in college. You know, their college coach, Mike Kinney, who lives here in Midland. Uh, Austin is a, an all-league uh, short stick midi for Alma. And Sam Luzar is a, you know, one of their starting uh, better defensemen. Uh, but how tough of a transition is that to make going from, again, you're staying as a midfielder, but going from a defensive one to an offensive one? It's not that difficult. Uh, I think the hardest part is learning to catch and throw with a longer stick. So when you go from a shorter stick to a longer one, it may take a few you know, weeks, months, depending on the player. Uh, Andriot looking right now for Midland, trying to strike while the iron's hot about a minute into the fourth quarter. All Midland over Bay City Western. Andriot yeah. with a wraparound opportunity yeah. and a goal for Midland. Yeah. So. There's a uh, there's a one on one right there, so an unassisted goal, which we haven't seen too many of today. So I think they're just trying to experiment with what they can do. I think when we see the replay, uh, we'll see the defenseman will try. Midland's goal, unassisted. One of the, he tries to take the ball away from him, and he goes over his head, and Michael just pulls the stick in and, and is able to get his hands free and get the shot off. How tough so. is it to come in cold off the bench as a goalie, as is the case right now for Nicholas Morse? Very difficult. Uh, I did not see them warming. Did not see them warming up. So we'll look at the replay here. Yeah, as you can see, he goes over his back and tries to get that ball. Uh, Michael made a nice shot. Uh, I did not see him warming him up uh, before he came into the game, and so tracking that ball, you know, it, again, that maybe was a 50 mile an hour shot. Uh, like I said, they can get up to higher speeds is difficult to do. Coy George with some green grass and a shot and a score. Oh. I think Midland senses they've got a new goalie in there. It hasn't been warmed up. They're just going to start taking shots on them and uh, you know, see what happens. This could grow into a long fourth quarter for Bay City Western head coach Derek Sugo. And I've been meaning to ask you, Joe, does Derek remind you at all of your experience, just how Derek is a former college lacrosse player like you? He's coaching not only a young team in Bay City Western, but is really trying to build a program like you did about yeah. 13 years ago with Midland. And Chris, I got to thank you again for comparing me to someone who's you know 30 years younger than me, so I appreciate that. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, here for. It's very similar. I think uh, I started playing lacrosse in ninth grade. Derek started in eighth grade. Uh, we both played in college. Um, I think he became a head coach a little bit sooner than I did. Um, I had worked for uh, in sales for many years before I coached in uh, Indiana. And there, Corey George, again, solo. So what you're seeing now is something that, you know, depending on the coaching, um, I would not be real happy with this at this level. I would want them to keep on to continue to make the passes because you get to a point where you know you can run through a player and score a goal. That really doesn't prove anything, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, but they, they, they need to, to move the ball around. So we're at a running clock now. Um, I think when the goals get to uh, 12 goals, and so there's Corey with a nice shot. So uh, I think this goalie's new. He's having a little tough time finding the ball. But uh, I think that's maybe why they put him in, to get him some experience. Um, Margin of victory certainly doesn't give you a higher playoff seating or anything like that. No. I think that's a good point you brought yeah. up. No, I think uh, depending on where you come, a lot of schools will stop at 19. It's just kind of an unwritten rule. Uh, I was talking to one of our past coaches today who coaches out in Washington, and every single one of his games has been 19 points. They just stopped at 19 where they could have scored more. You get some schools that run it up, you know, if it's a rival or something, or if they're getting players in that haven't played much. You know, Midland has a small uh, roster. There are some schools in the state that have, you know, 35, 40 players on the varsity team. And so most of these boys don't get in. And so when they do, it's hard to tell them not to score. Dylan Jaime with it now for Bay City Western. Has Ryeski to his left. Takes it himself. Yeah. Pass behind Brendan Jaime, his older brother. So you see Ryan Crush playing some defense on there. And you saw him. Some people look at it and they're confused with lacrosse because he looked like he pushed him with the shaft. If he pushes him, and he, as long as his gloves make contact with his body, it's a legal check. If he contacts him with the shaft in between 
his gloves. That's a, that's a cross check. There's a bullet from Elliott Moore and another score for Midland. Feed from uh, Zahn. So Jared Zahn coming into the season had 65 assists in two years at Midland. So he is he's what we call a feeder. He sees the field well. How fast do you think this shot was? Oh, not not very. I'd say probably 60 miles an hour. <laughs> it looked pretty fast yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. It's not his fastest shot. I know uh, L.A. can shoot faster than that. Typically, you don't like to, as a coach, get out there and, and talk about the speed of the shot, but you, wanna, you want the boys to improve and do, do some things to improve their uh, speed of the shot, whether it's lifting weights or technique. Um, one of the things you notice, too, on the substitution game here, lacrosse has a substitution box. It's 20 yards long, and that's, that's the area you have to enter and leave the field. The only time you're not allowed, you're allowed to not go through that box is uh, at the end of a period or a timeout. So at any point when you're substituting, you'll, sometimes you'll see coaches or players want to walk off the field, and the coaches will send them through the box because they want them to do that. That's one of the uni unique things about the game. Again, here, nice face off. Joe That's Cullinane racing downfield, and that one's poked behind the goal line and out of play. It should be Bay City's ball. Uh, we fell into the crease. Yep, okay, someone did see it. If you fall into the crease on a loose ball, it's just possession Bay City. But if you go into the crease and the goalie has the ball, it's a free clear. Or if you hit the goalie when he's in the crease, then you get the ball at the other end, side of the midfield. Tyler Sinek with a sidearm pass to Ryeski. He has it poked away. There's Christian. Doing well today. And for a player like Christian uh, Gordon, who is still very new to the sport, as you said, this has got to be a confidence-building yeah. game for him. Yeah, it's one of the things that... Uh, it can be an advantage having the program that we have is typically we don't get juniors or seniors coming out for lacrosse because they typically say, oh, well, I can't catch and throw the ball that well, and all my friends can because they've been playing so long. But if you're an athlete, you, you can play the game. It just takes a little time to learn to catch and throw. Should have a penalty now that the possession has gone back to Midland. And it looks like Zach Chichester, the guilty party, a slash. Yeah, and a sla it's an interesting rule. If you actually look in the rule book, it says a slash is any violent swing of the stick, and you do not have to hit the other player. Most officials don't call it, but he had his hand, you know, the stick up there like kind of like a tomahawk and swinging it kind of out of control, probably not for him because he's a pretty big, strong boy. But uh, the officials thought that that was an uncontrolled stick, and so they called the penalty. And also if he hit his shoulder or he hit his forearm, because you're only allowed to hit the glove. Uh, although they have arm guards on there and shoulder pads. The shoulder pads are much like hockey pads. They're very light. They're not designed for anyone to lower their shoulder and make contact with another player. They're just if a ball or a stick accidentally hits it. Shot wide to the right by sophomore Rocco Jaime. Beyond the end line, but Bay City Western hangs onto it. 5-10 to play in the game. Loose in front, scooped up by Midland. That's Cam Donahue with a nice ground ball. Nearly tripped, oh. staggering, yeah, and here comes a flag. Yeah. And tripping is a penalty in lacrosse. Yep, it is. You can't do it by accident or on purpose. Sometimes players will complain because they say, I didn't do it on purpose. It, it doesn't matter if you put your stick out and someone trips on it. Uh, it's a one-minute penalty. It almost looked like Donahue was going to fight through this one. Yeah, He's so actually he, a little winded. No, actually, they may call that a slash. Someone came in there and really had a nice swing on him, so I think that's what they did end up calling. He's bent over right now just outside of the Midland team bench, so I think that is what happened, Joe. Yeah. I hope he didn't get a hip pointer. You know, there's no protection around the hips. Um, those shoulder pads are really light, not designed to save you from... You know, someone swinging that stick like that. So, what was the most painful lacrosse injury you had? <laughs> well, I'm I'm not typical, but uh, my junior year in high school, my femur snapped in half. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty painful. Yeah, I had cracked it the week before and didn't know it, and it uh, finally snapped all the way. So, but yeah, typically sprained ankles, uh, sometimes broken fingers. You know, if they, uh, oh. Looked like a save that was, time that for Bay nice City save. Western. Yeah. Nicholas Morse finding his footing in goal. That's great. That's got to make him feel good because that's, uh, that's a great player that took a great shot and he made a great save. 
Dawson Richard runs into traffic in the Dawson. wing area. Oh, I like Dawson. He's a, he's a solid player. Jaime spins, centers, shoots, oh. but Krivka uh -huh. gobbles it up. So you see the uh, the players will stand outside when the goal is clearing it with their sticks in the air. They can't check him when he's in that circle. And even if he throws the ball and it hits their stick, it's still a uh, free clear. Annalyn with a oh, difficult behind-the-back behind the back shot. Actually, it wasn't a bad shot. No. No, behind the back is a part of the game. It increases your angle. I think, again, you're seeing Midland do what you wanted to see them do earlier in this fourth quarter. With the game out of hand, they're continuing to pass. Yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, I don't know if he's been talking to them on the sideline to make sure that they get away from the selfish game, which is isolation you don't all have, the time. You don't have an intercom down there, do you? No. <laughs> not the first time. It's no. almost like they've listened to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great clear. Three and a half minutes left. Midland goes on to take on Saginaw Heritage next on April 10th. Heritage is now a Division I lacrosse program. Yep. And they're actually they're getting better every year because uh, they have that youth program feeding them. Bay yeah. City Western moves on to take on arch rival Bay City Central, and so the Warriors now with a game under their belts. You have to think will come out hungry to take on the Crosstown rival on April 11th. Here's Dylan Jaime. Good defense, good check, good takeaway. That was Brendan Letart. Now Crichton Annalyn through the wing area. Long strides around Logan Kraus. A shot. Blocked by a Bay City Western defender. Looked like Dawson Richard maybe got a stick on it. Midland hangs on. Oh, great look, great shot. And a score, courtesy of Ethan Richard, the junior. That's his first goal, first high school varsity goal. So they're playing well. They're getting different players scoring, which is always nice. You don't, you know, as much as Garrett had a great game in the first half. I think they're purposely, you know, getting other players involved and getting some playing time, which is Number awesome three. to see. Midland on its way Ethan to Richard. its first victory of the 2018 campaign. Number 13, Take a Ethan look at this goal Moore. by Ethan Richard. Yep, so you can see he had uh, he moved away from the player, freed himself up, had some space and time to you know, really work on the accuracy of that shot where he was placing it. Midland lacrosse, quite a story. You started it in 2005. You had 12 boys, one girl come out for your first team. Now the program, including being a school-sanctioned varsity sport, has grown to nearly 300 members. Yeah. This co-op thing is working between Midland and Dow, but do you want the numbers to grow to the point where both Midland and Dow have their own teams? Yeah, exactly. That is the plan. Um, we don't uh, – what's, what's unique – uh, to think about Bay City and Saginaw's program, they are just a single school. That was a nice shot by Tommy uh, Middleton. Is they have as many high school players as we do, and we're two high schools. So we're still, our numbers are a little low. Um, you know, it's a big baseball town. You know, everyone's getting involved in multiple sports, um, you know, whether it be spring hockey or soccer year round. I'm not a big fan of uh, playing one sport all the time. I prefer people to play multiple sports, especially at the high school level. And, uh, you know, Tommy Middleton out there, number 19, is, a, you know, an amazing hockey player. And uh, I think Coach Perlhart had a nice talk with him to convince him to come out and not play spring hockey and just enjoy his senior year, you know, doing something different. So, But the fact that we're at 300, you know, players is a testament to the families in Midland, you know, the coaches and all the help that we've had. It's certainly not one person's uh, accomplishment. It's a, it's a group effort. So I'm proud to be part of it. Coy George with a pass in front. Bay City Western gets in the mix. Here's Dawson Richard with a tail Mary. Ten Final seconds. 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. Final score tonight. Okay. Midland and it's an emphatic 17. home opener win for yeah. Midland Lacrosse. 17 to 2 over Bay City Western. So I think uh, I, you know, I think overall Bay City should be pleased. I think uh, you know the Midlands got a few more players on the team, a little uh, deeper uh, staff uh, as far as the players. Um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, Midland should be pleased as well. They move the ball well. They do have some things to work on. Obviously, it's early in the season. 
Uh, but uh, overall, I think everything's looking good. After Midland's oh. first game against Canton, Kirk Brillhart, the head coach, said that he wanted to see crisper fundamentals, passing, yeah. catching. Did you see that today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was definitely a, a much better uh, outcome. Uh, you can tell I think they were working on that in practice. Lacrosse, you know, I tell the boys a lot of times, you know, because – you watch the games on ESPN, you watch the Hopkins and the Maryland's, and they're saying the same things that we're saying, you know, move the ball, you know, you know, work on solid defense, play you know, with your feet, not your stick, don't go over the head. You know, so there's no secrets out there as far as how to play the game. It, like you said, it's basic fundamentals and just, you know, getting that, uh, making sure the kids and the boys uh, concentrate on that. So, Again, Midland's next test comes in a couple of weeks against Saginaw Heritage. Does the interim perhaps worry you as a coach of some residual rust forming? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of spring break. Uh, I didn't have spring break in high school or college. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit older than most people, but, uh, Sorry, but kids. <laughs> involved in this game. And uh, last year we actually had a game on the last Sunday, the second Sunday of spring break. Um, it is a lot of time off, and uh, most coaches aren't, aren't fans of it. You know, every sport has their break. Um, you know, baseball has the same problem. All spring sports have the same problem that we have, you know, with this with this break. So it's up to the boys to keep the stick in their hand, you know, when they're on vacation or wherever they are, just, you know, keep it fresh, catching and throwing and, and you know, maybe do some running so they don't lose that. But um, the, the problem is in, Mi in Michigan is, you know, we're on spring break, you know, coming up, but the team that they, they play, fortunately, I think Saginaw's on spring break as well, so that's sometimes we, we do that on purpose. If you play a team down in Detroit that, that already had their spring break and they were fresh, you know, for the seven days before the game, that can be a disadvantage. So um, just part of the game. We're only two games into the season if you're Midland, so it's awfully hard to forecast to May when the state tournament begins. But Midland was a two seed last year in the eight-team region. And is the expectation to get that two seed locked up again? Can they become a one seed in their region this year? It would be a challenge. And the one thing that will help is they play Brighton near the end of the season, and Brighton is one of the better teams in the state. And uh, with the schedule that they have, the, the teams that we try to play, we always try to play a higher caliber team. We're not really interested in playing a team that we, you know, play and, and, and beat handedly. We'd rather almost lose a close game to prepare you for that state playoff run. And so it's, uh, I think uh, Coach Brillhart and his staff are, are doing that and they're, they're ready to do that. They have a 15-game schedule. And uh, in high school, you can have 18 games in a season. So... I think they, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if they'll be a one seed, but I think a two or three seed would be bear, very possible depending on how things go. Unfortunately, you have that injury to Ryan Sasicki, uh, you know, one of the premier uh, midfielders in the state. And, uh, you know, so it's just one of those things that the rest of the boys are going to have to step up. We're going to have to find some leadership on the team. And, you know, I think Brillhart put himself in a good situation today with, you know, with the output that he had. So I'll, give you, I'll get you out of here on this. Of course, Brillhart had the five-goal game, but was there – maybe an under-the-radar player whose performance might not necessarily be reflected in the box score but gave one that stood out to you? I would say uh, Christian. Um, he just, the fact that he is, is so new to the game and he just seems to have a sense for it already. Um, you know, and it's just, it's very impressive to me for someone, there's, the game is so complicated for those people who don't know it when it's new, but once you get to know the feel of the game, um, I think he did really well. I think he's got a bright future uh, ahead of him. But I think overall, everyone played pretty well. No one made any really silly mistakes that put the team in danger, themselves in danger. So I think uh, they should be happy with the, uh, with the outcome and the way they played. So Midland moves to 1-1 one one on the season after a 17-2 win over Bay City Western. Bay City Western drops to 0-1 on the season. And remember, you can watch a replay of this game on Charter Channel 189 and ATT U-verse Channel 99, that is, on March 30th at 8 in the morning and at 8 at night. So for Joe Stottlemyre, my name is Chris Fosters. Enjoy your spring break, and thanks for tuning in to MCTV Sports.